Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Omron CP1H to Seymour Micro HMI communication. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start your video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So. Up on my screen, the first thing we'll see is we'll take a look at the hardware that we have. And I'll call that up, and here we go. And you can see here that we have our Omron uh, PLC. And this is actually the Omron CP1H-XA40DR-A. And we are communicating to our software through the built-in USB uh, communication port. And this is our analog input, so we do have an analog input style right here. And we have our voltage tester that we've, we've uh, made with a potentiometer and a 9 volt battery to the first input of our, of our unit here. Attached to the plug-in module, we have a communication, which is our RS-485. And it's a CP1W-CIF12-V1. So we are communicating RS-485 serially to our um, micro HMI, which is the um, EA3-T4CL. And this is our micro uh, four inch touchscreen uh, display panel. So this is our PLC. It's 40 uh, inputs, 40 outputs. And this is our touchscreen TFT um, four inch display screen. And you can see uh, um, we are communicating currently right now you can see our indication light here and we're communicating the back of this unit so let's just turn this around and a couple of things you'll notice is that we have our um, ethernet port right here and we are uh, communicating that's how we're programming then we have our flashing send receive. This is our communication back to our RS-45 port right here. And then we have our supply voltage coming in here, which is 12 to 24 volt. That powers up this screen. So what we can do is you can also see that we have this uh, connector. And this connector goes to a, a DB15 uh, on the unit. And this, these are great little gadgets. If I just pop that open and open that up, you will actually see the wiring diagram. Everything goes to uh, terminals and, and everything's labeled on here. And so we see nine and 10 are my send and receive um, and 11 and 12 are my other jumper cables. And what I'll do is just call that up through uh, here. So here's my Seabor uh, serial port. So we have a couple of jumpers in there just to indicate that this is uh, 45. So again, all these links and there's a affiliate link for Amazon to get one of these plugs if you would like. And these are great little plugs to have even in your toolbox. I use ones for DB9s as well as the 15s here and 25s so these little breakout boxes you can't really live without so we'll pop that back together turn that around and you can see that we are communicating to our screen so now let's let's next take a look at the actual uh, plc software and here we are communicating and we're in monitor mode and speaking of monitor mode, if we go into the um, once we're online and program PLC, then go edit, and then we go settings, or we can select settings over here under the project uh, uh, view. If we look at startup, we go into monitor mode right here. So as, this, as the PLC starts up, it allows us to go into monitor mode. Now this is important because uh, on the Omron, it will default typically to the last uh, setting, which is um, typically a run mode and in run mode 
anything communicating such as our HMI display screen would not be able to communicate back to our um, controller or write information into that controller. So that's why we need to start up in monitor mode in order to facilitate that data information um, changing. So next we have, so we'll just close that down. And next we have our start stop circuit. So we have our, our start coming from our HMI at, at channel 21, bit 00. And it's gonna start our output, which is our first output located right here down on address 100 bit zero zero then we have our stop on our HMI and then we have our physical stop wired into our first input now I don't have that on there so we have it forced currently then we have our jog bit and our jog bit actually comes in uh, channel 23 bit zero zero and this is the work bit so this we've done a a post on this prior and you again you'll see links on this on our website at accautomation.ca next part we have our analog input signal and what we do is we bring that signal in all the time we are scaling it and so it will go from 0 to 100 based on the analog signal coming in from our potentiometer and then the last line actually contains the uh, seven segment display screen which is located right here and we can enter values into that display screen and have them appear indicating right here. So that gives a, a good indication that we can do things like display error codes and stuff like that for diagnostic features. So that is the uh, PLC program. Next, if we call up our Seymour micro programming software, you'll see that I have one screen right here and the first thing we'll do is take a look at our setup and under panel manager what you will see is that we have under COM port number two we have set it for PC protocol of Omron C200 C500 host link adapter which runs the host link protocol We'll leave, we left the whole PLC host link unit as default of zero. And then our baud rate parity is default at 9600 even. And then our data bits are seven, stop bits are two. Now this is the default for the Omron communication ports, 9600 even seven two. Then you'll see that we have selected our RS-45 as yes. So we are using the RS-45 connection and then our link selector is multiple. What this means is that we can have a one-to-one -one, uh, link, which would be single, which means that the protocol actually changes this host link protocol. When we select multiple, it means we can have multiple units connected to uh, this unit. So in this case here, this acts as like a master to the host link slave, and we're sending out the protocol to say, do this, do this, do this, uh, to each one of these units specified here. So we can have up to 32 of these units. So again, this host link selector must be selected to multiple and for it to work. So that is our panel manager. Now, if we look at our database, now we're not gonna say that because we already have it down. If we look at our database and the tag name database, we have our uh, start push button which comes in channel 22 bit 00 we have our output which is 100 00 our stop which is 22 bit 00 and our jog is 23 bit 00 we have our analog input coming in DM0 and we have our seven, seven segment display coming in DM1 so You'll notice that our analog input is actually in BCD or binary coded decimal and it's integer 16 bit. And our seven segment display is unsigned integer 16 bit. So that means it's gonna present this in a hexadecimal format or send it out into a hex format for us. So let's cancel that. And this is our program itself. So the first one we have is we have actually an indicating button so you can see here that our push button start, our push button start is actually the 
uh, push button tag that we have and it's momentary and then we have our output indicator which is actually the output that we're controlling which is output one and it's going to be controlling the light on this and you can see here in our simulation we can simulate on and off on our panel then if we look at the off it's just a push button and again um, it goes to the push button stop it's a momentary and again we can simulate it on and off just like that so and then we have our jog which is actually the um, again a momentary push button jog so we have to hit and hold it in order for our jog to function correctly and again it's going to look like this as I uh, turn it on and off so I'll just say so that then we have our analog and our analog is going to be based on um, a movement clockwise and we have our analog input which is coming in DM0 and it's going to be showing us a value from 0 to 100 in that unit All right. then we have our display unit and our display unit shows our DM0 and our analog input value and we're going to do three digits because it's going to go from 0 to 100 and we're going to uh, justify it by leading spaces then we have our numeric edit so this will allow us to actually change the value so it's coming in DM1 it's a seven segment display and what we do is if we look at that, there's our seven second display right there. And then we're gonna uh, use a uh, pop-up screen here in order to uh, look at that uh, information. So again, three characters, zero fractions, and leading spaces. And if we wanted to, we could put a minimum and maximum range on this. So that is our program and we've actually put a, a couple of letters here and we put a bitmap down here of the logo. So that is the screen and then we just send it. But there's also a simulation package in the Seymour Micro and we can simulate this before we actually uh, dump it down into this display screen even though we do know it works. So there's uh, the simulation and here's the corresponding screen. And as I change values here, it'll change appropriately. So if I want to turn the output on and simulate that, it'll look like this. If I wanted the, um, the indication here or see what it's going to look like if I change a value in the seven segment display, I can click it and then we'll put 255, enter, and it puts FF here. And then we'll see if something happen on the controller. Also, if we were to change our DM0, which is our uh, analog value, and we'll go to 50, hit enter, you can see that our needle comes up to 50 and we display 50 here. So it looks like our simulation is working exactly as we thought it would. And you can see here that my jog, my off, seems to function, and you can see the corresponding bits going on and off in our simulation panel. So let's exit out of that. And what we'll do is we transfer it using the send uh, project to panel. Then once it's transferred, what we can do is then simulate our actual screen itself. And you can notice that if I turn or touch the on button, first of all, the on is now highlighted. And we also have our output on. If I hit the off, it turns it off. If I hit and hold the jug, it actually turns it on as long as I have my finger on the button. And you can see the reaction time is pre pretty quick. And in the logic in the controller, you can actually see that happening. It's on, off, on, and off. Then you can see right now is our analog is actually showing 46 so if I take my pot and increase it you can actually see it going up and 
now we're at 62. We can turn it back down again, 37. And then finally, if we hit our DM1, right now it's at A, which is showing us on our seven second display. We have our display screen come up. We can enter the value as we did in our simulator of 255. Let's do that first, 255, enter. You can see that now that we have the value of FF and we have FF on our corresponding screen. So very straightforward, communicating from the Seymour Micro to the Omron controller. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Stay safe.